Well, Happy New Year! Blwydd i newydd a i chi gyd. We meet on the 1st of January 2021, the beginning of a new year. We come together to worship and to thank God for his faithfulness to us. And we look back over the year that has been, and I know it's been a hard and a difficult and, and often times in the year that has gone past, we've had been many times of uncertainty as to what was going to happen because of this pandemic. We pray that this new year will bring us new light and hope and the security of God's presence who is with us from one generation to the next. So a very, very warm welcome. It's a joy for Daryl and I to welcome you to Greenfield this morning and pray that this short act of worship on this first day of a new year will be a blessing to you. Let us pray. Oh God, our Father, we have come to praise you at the beginning of this new year. We come because only you are worthy and we give you thanks that you have brought us safely to this new year. We thank you for your promise that you will be with us. And so with your church in every land, we come this new day, this new year, to proclaim that you are our God and that we are your people. Indeed, Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Almighty, eternal, most holy God, you indeed are worthy of worship and honour and love. We bring you our worship today. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be all glory, honour and praise. Amen. We join together in our hymn, His Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided.
I'd like to read to you today from the book of Deuteronomy. We read from chapter 11, and it's verses 8 through to verse 21. Observe, therefore, all the commands I am giving you today, so that you may have the strength to go in and take over the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, and so that you might live long in the land, the land the Lord swore to your ancestors and their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. The land you are entering to take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you planted your seed and irrigated it by foot as in a vegetable garden. But the land you are crossing the Jordan to take possession of is a land of mountains and valleys that drinks rain from heaven. It is a land the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are continually on it from the beginning of the year to its end. So if you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and all your soul, then I will send rain on your land in its season, both autumn and spring rains, so that you may gather in your corn new wine and olive oil. I will provide grass in the fields for your cattle, and you will eat and you will be satisfied. Be careful, or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. Then the Lord's anger will burn against you and he will shut the heavens so that it will not rain and the ground will yield no produce and you will soon perish from the good land the Lord has given you. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. May God bless to us our reading from his holy word. Amen. Another hymn, dear friends, because he lives.
Let us pray. Lord, we have come today to seek guidance for our journey through life. None of us know what this new year holds for us, and yet we rejoice in your promise that you will be with us. Lord, we come to you as we are, that we may be changed by your grace. We come, perhaps, with our emptiness that we might be filled. We come with darkness seeking your light. We come with our weaknesses to receive your strength. We come with our lives to be filled with your power. We come with our worship to praise you forever. Lord, you are the source of all that is good, right and true. At the beginning of this new year, we seek your leading and guidance, Lord. None of us can see further than this very moment, and yet you have promised to be with us, and for that we give you thanks and praise. Give us the grace to face whatever this year holds for us. In times of joy and thanksgiving, help us to be grateful and to count our blessings and be a source of joy and comfort to others. If this new year brings unexpected challenges, please, Lord, give us the grace and the assurance of your presence. If sadness and sorrow come our way, then give us more than ever before a renewed confidence in the words of Jesus, I will be with you even to the end of the age. And so now, our Father, we just thank you for your love. We look back over the year that has been and we recall your mercies to us, even in times of darkness and uncertainty. The light of your love has shone around us. Give us confidence to face this new year, knowing that you have ordained a path for us, that you have granted us the assurance of your peace and presence along the way. And Lord, grant us that we might look to Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. In his name we pray. Amen. The 23rd Psalm has been a source of blessing to us along the pilgrimage of our lives in all the circumstances of our lives. And now we're going to hear the hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd.
Well, hello, dear friends. It's good to be here in Greenfield today. And as we come together on this New Year's Day, we continue to thank God for his faithfulness to us as his children. We come in anticipation of God's peace and presence as we come at the beginning of a new year. A new year is a time when we do share in new resolutions for the future. And we come together today resolved to worship God and to come into his presence with thanksgiving for all that has been and all that will be. The word of God tells us that God is yesterday, today, and forever the same. At the beginning of a new year, we take stock and look back at the year that has been, and we recognize today it's not been an easy track for us through 2020. Who would have thought this time last year that we would encounter this terrible, terrible pandemic that today is having more of a marked effect than any other time in the year that has gone by. And so we do come knowing that we have been through the valley in a sense. But God has brought us to this new day. It's New Year's Day, beginning of a new year. A new chapter begins for us. And perhaps we need today to look back with gratitude that even in the midst of the storms that we have known, God has brought us peace and has brought us to this day. Of course, we remember especially those who are still suffering from this pandemic. We especially remember those who are bereaved, those who are facing treatment at this time. Wherever they may be in the world, we pray that God will deliver us from this time. I read from the book of Deuteronomy today because it has an important message for us. A time when the children of Israel had been led by God to the verge of the Jordan, a new land lay before them, a land flowing with milk and honey. They had known 400 years of slavery under the heel of their Egyptian oppressors. Moses had come to deliver them from the, the plight or, or the, that they were suffering, brought them to Mount Sinai where they received the law of God and that law was given to them that they might become a nation under God. But they rejected the law and it was a generation before they inherited the land. But God granted them that land. They crossed the Jordan to the other side and they inherited the land that God had promised to their ancestors. God's faithfulness is seen here in this story, and this is a faithfulness that remains to this very day. We often sing that hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God our Father, there is no shadow of turning from thee. God's faithfulness is something we can rely on in the day and the age in which we live. As he was faithful to our forefathers, so he is faithful to us in our day. There have been times in the history of our nation, times of war, times of need. God remained faithful to us. God is the one who maintains his presence with us and will neither leave us nor forsake us. That was the experience of the children of Israel. Despite their rebelliousness, despite their sin, God called them to trust and believe in his providence, in his goodness and in his grace. And he said he would bless them. And dear friends, as we face a new year, let's, let's hold on to those promises. Let's be sure of that faithfulness. God says here in his word that he would say, send showers from heaven, rain to bless the land, that they might know continually the growth of their crops, that they might be those who would, would grow in knowledge of the goodness of God and would see that in the bounty of his hand. Dear friends, God is with us and will be with us to this new year. May we have the grace, may we know peace in our hearts, and may we begin to understand his purposes. There's an old hymn that says, The storm may roar around me, my heart may low be laid, but God is round about me. How can I be dismayed? Let's look back and, and remember the faithfulness that God has shown to us as a church, as a community, as individuals. Jesus is with us. And through the providence and the grace of God, the baby born in Bethlehem is the one who will be with us to this new year. And then the present age in which we're living. It's an age of great complexity, is it not? The reality of the days in which we live is that we live in a world that is divided by wars and rumours of wars. We look at the political scene and we see the unrest in many lands and many nations. This pandemic has compounded the suffering that many people know. In many parts of the world today, the Christian church is being persecuted. Believers in Christ are suffering greatly because of their faith. There are many who, who are in prison because of their principles because they have stood up for the, the lost and the lonely and the forgotten of society. They live under cruel regimes that would see their end. It's far from ideal, isn't it? It's far from ideal. 
But that's the sort of world that these Israelites knew as well. It wasn't ideal for them. They had been in the wilderness for a whole generation before they inherited this land. They were now ready for something new, for a new beginning, a new land that they would keep the promises of God. Unfortunately, they didn't. Some of them bowed to the, to the, to the gods of Canaan. Eventually, they found themselves in captivity in Babylon, longing to return to the city of Jerusalem. Did God leave them? No. Did he forsake them? No. Why? Because he had entered into covenant with them. In the book of Jeremiah we read, I will be your God and you will be my people. That's the covenant of grace, you see. That's the nature and character of God we can hold on to at the beginning of a new year. Because of our present circumstances may not be ideal. Perhaps life for you and I isn't ideal at this moment. Perhaps we feel, sometimes we ask the question, where are you, God, in the midst of my uncertainty, in the midst of my doubts and fears? Well, let's remember that he is as with us now as he was with us in the past and will be with us to each new tomorrow. Jesus came into the world. The message of Christmas is God with us. The presence of Christ is with us now in the power of his spirit. All who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That's what scripture says. And that salvation is full and free to all who would come. And within it is the assurance and joy of the one who will be with you in the darkest hour of your night. He's the God of the past. He's the God of the present. And dear friends, he is certainly the God of the future. When we look at the book of Deuteronomy and the early history of Israel, we see the conflicts, as I have mentioned, the journeyings from Egypt to the land of promise, the times in which the children, the chosen people of God, rebelled against him, and yet God remained faithful. And then the wonderful truth that we have at the beginning of a new year, that in the fullness of time, time, the fullness of time, God sent his only son into the world. Christ is described in scripture as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And if we talk about the beginnings here of a nation of Israel, let's go for a moment to the book of Revelation, the final book of the Bible, where John and Isle of Patmos sees a beautiful tomorrow. And in Revelation 21, he says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first earth and sea had passed away. And there was no more sea, and I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, that future that is to be. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying, for the former things will have passed away. Friends, let's remember today, at the beginning of a new year, that we all have a past. We can look back sometimes and we can look, did I do that? Did I say that? God has forgiven us in Christ. We live in the future. What's happening, Lord, in the midst of the uncertainty and all the problems we see around us, this pandemic that is raging, where are you, Lord? Do you know Jesus came and calmed the storm on Lake Tiberias? and said, do not worry, it is I. Christ is with you and I today. And if that's true about yesterday, today, what about the future? Remember, new heaven, new and earth, for the former things will have passed away. Dear friends, that's the joy we know today as we face a new year. May it be your joy, may it be your peace today. I wish you a happy new year, a happy new year that it might be truly one, that is a time of blessing for you as you come and grow a knowledge and faith of our Saviour. As you know that God is with you, as you know that God has prepared something more abundant than we can ever, ever comprehend this side of glory. The joy that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, today, and forever the same. Let us pray. Lord, we pray, especially now for those who are in need. We pray for our community here in Llanelli. Be of help and support to those who are facing difficult situations and perhaps difficult decisions that have to be made. We pray for the healing of the brokenhearted, those who have lost loved ones, especially over the Christmas time, Lord. Families that feel bereft and lonely and afraid at this time. May they know the confidence of the one who is the resurrection and the life. May the peace and assurance of Jesus be there for all who mourn at this time. 
Father, we do pray for families who we have ministered to as a church in these times and continue to do so. May they know the blessing of your peace. And Father, we do pray that you will be with those who are working even at this hour, doctors and nurses, those on the front line, Lord, who are seeking to bring healing and comfort in the midst of this pandemic. Prosper their work, we pray, at this time. And may they know of your support and help in the midst of their efforts. Father, we do pray for those who have responsibility in government, in parliament, our national assembly, those on our local councils and those who have to make far-reaching decisions. Lord, give them wisdom from on high. And give us, Lord, a spirit of cooperation and mutual respect for one another that we might seek the good of all within our community and within our land. Father, we pray for our world. You are the Prince of Peace, Lord, and in the fullness of time, the baby born in Bethlehem fulfilled that promise. May the counsel of your word be a source of new beginnings and a vision implanted in all our hearts of a world free from want and war. May we, as the family of humankind, always seek the ways of love, compassion, and care. For the lost and hungry, for those who feel that life has no purpose, Lord, may this new year be a time of new beginnings. Lord, we pray today that you will help us to be ambassadors of your peace wherever you call us to be, and grant that we might know in our hearts the very presence of the one who came to serve and not to be served. We thank you for Jesus and pray that his spirit and his presence will uphold and keep us to this new year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, dear friends, it's been a joy for Dara and I to be with you on this New Year's Day. May God bless you to this new year. None of us know what it holds for us, but we know that God is with us. And I pray you will know his peace, his presence to each new tomorrow. And what a wonderful hymn to conclude, dear friends. The words of William Williams Pantacurian, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah.
Let us pray. Father, we seek your blessing now as we bring this service to a close. Grant that your church may show forth the story of your grace and love to this new year. Especially we remember our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ, that they, even under the oppression they suffer, may be sure that you are with them. We pray for their families who are separated from their loved ones because of their love for Christ, that they might be strengthened to face all the taunts of the evil one. Grant to them the sure and confident hope of the victory that is assured through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And so, Lord, we offer our New Year Day praise to you. Bless us now and our families to this new year. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and those we love, now and always. Amen. <laughs>